You are watching UNO with Dr. Amrish Saxena. Hello students, today is Friday 25th of October 2019. Yesterday the counting happened in the assembly elections of Haryana and Maharashtra and the results were clear by the night. In Haryana there is a fractured mandate whereas in Maharashtra the BJP and the Shiv Sena combined they have almost cross the 50 percent marks. Now, if we look at the whole election scenario, there are too many parties which were in the fray in both the states. Now, what is the importance of political parties in a democratic setup? There are two types of democracies in the world, the presidential form of democracy and the parliament form of democracies. But in both types of democracies, political parties are very, very important. If we look at the United States, which is an example of the presidential form, there are two parties, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Similarly, in UK, there are two major parties, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. Now, if we look at the Indian scenario, there are too many parties and we call it a system of multi-party. Now, what kind of parties are they? There are some big parties, there are some uh, smaller parties. And uh, since uh, there are too many parties for the formation of the government, they have to join hands. This we call the coalitions. In India, there have been two major coalitions. One is called UPA, that is United Progressive Alliance. Another is NDA, that is National Democratic Alliance. In Haryana, obviously, there was no pre-poll alliance, but in Maharashtra, there was a pre-poll alliance. On one hand, there were BJP and Shiv Sena. On the other hand, there were Congress and NCP. In Haryana, there was no pre-poll alliance, but now there is a possibility of post-poll alliance. And this has necessitated for the reason that no single party has crossed the 50 percent marks. So either BJP or Congress, whosoever is trying to form the government, they have to take the support of smaller parties and it will be called the post-poll alliance. If we further look into the political parties in India, there are two types of parties. One are called the national parties and the other are called the regional parties or the state parties. This categorization is done based on the rules of the Election Commission of India. Any political party which is contesting the election has to be registered with the Election Commission and then the Election Commission has laid down the rules to decide the status of political party. For instance, a national party is a political party party which fulfills certain conditions. What are those conditions? Either that party has to secure in Lok Sabha election more than 2 percent of seats in 3 or more than 3 states or that party in Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha elections has to acquire 6 percent or more than 6 percent of votes in 4 or more than 4 states along with obtaining at least 4 Lok Sabha seats or that party has to have the status of state party in more than 4 states. Almost same kind of rules have been prescribed for state parties as far as the percentage of votes is concerned or having a cap of minimum number of seats is concerned. Another important uh, feature of this election in Haryana and Maharashtra is the rise of the independents. Now in Haryana, there are seven independents who have won the election. In Maharashtra, more than 15 independents have won the election. Since in Haryana there is a fractured mandate, these independents have become very, very important. Most of the independent candidates are actually the rebels of the major political parties. For instance, in Haryana, there are five independents who fought election as rebel candidates, rebel of BJP. and 
in Congress, there were two rebels who fought the election and won the election as independent candidates. Now, coming to another story, which is coming from Hong Kong. You must be knowing that in Hong Kong, a massive protest was happening for the last 20 weeks. And this protest was against a bill that the administration of Hong Kong was trying to get passed. Now, this uh, protest is expected to be formally over after the administration has announced that they are dropping the bill. This announcement was made two days back and now the leaders of this movement, they are thinking to call off the agitation, but they have put a condition. Their condition is that there should be amnesty granted to all those people who participated in this agitation and against whom the cases have been filed and who are under detention or arrest. After this government's announcement, the next weekend is coming from tomorrow. So, whether the agitators will again collect to raise their voice or they will formally call off everything. And this protest in Hong Kong were very, very unique in the sense that protests were happening only on weekends, not on the weekdays. On weekdays, people were working in their offices and on weekend, they were protesting on the streets. These protests were there against a bill which prescribed that any fugitive in Hong Kong has to be transferred to the mainland that is People's Republic of China. Hong Kong used to be part of China earlier, but in 1898, China gave it to Britain on a lease of 99 years. In 1997, Britain was under pressure to give it back to China. But the people of uh, Hong Kong were not very excited to join hands with China and so Britain was not also so much inclined. So few conditions were attached while Hong Kong was transferred to China and this is called one country, two systems. Means the system of governance and the system of economy will be exclusive of Hong Kong though People's Republic of China will keep a control on Hong Kong. Hong Kong is considered the business and the commercial capital of the world. It is the 10th biggest exporting city of the world. It is the 9th biggest importer in the world and its currency Hong Kong dollar is the 9th most traded currency in the world. Now looking into the case which precipitated this whole thing. One person with the name of Chen, he murdered his pregnant girlfriend in Taiwan and fled away to Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, he was caught, he was jailed, but he was not sent back to Taiwan because there is no extradition treaty between Taiwan and Hong Kong. And meanwhile, the People's Republic of China asked the Hong Kong administration to hand over that person to People's Republic of China. But then there is no law about that also. And that is how Hong Kong administration was trying to bring that bill so that all fugitives can finally be handed over to China. Now, let us see what will happen in Hong Kong in the light of so many historical perspective and the present equations there and the world. That is all in today's edition.